Thank you for your patience. Welcome to the very first ever production of the Chelsea Players Theatre of the Air. As the director, I'm contractually obligated to tell you the location of the emergency exits and the restrooms. You may all look around, see them, good. Thank you for, your, for participating and men, most of you have now figured out where the Q&A function is. And thank you for letting me know that you could hear me and hopefully you will be able to hear the actors. If not, we are in a lot of trouble. But you can use your Q&A function to send questions for afterwards. They will show up on our screens. They should not show up on yours. And uh, at the end, though, at the end, uh, we can answer them live. Uh, you can eat as much candy and crunch it and eat popcorn and whatever you like. It won't bother us. But seriously, we hope you'll have the best possible experience. So uh, you've got the Q&A function going. Hopefully you're going to be seeing the actors side by side on your screen, um, the full screen. So journey with us via technology and your imagination to 1931. We're in a railroad car and here we are. Well, here we are. Well, here we are, aren't we? Yep, I should say we are. Here we well. are. Well, well, how does it feel to be an old married lady? Oh, it's far too soon to be asking me that. After all, we've only been married for three hours. We have been married exactly two hours and 20 minutes. My, it seems longer. Uh, no, it isn't hardly half past six yet. <laughs> it seems like later. I guess it's because it starts getting dark so early. It does at that. The nights are gonna be pretty long from now on. I, 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 mean, I mean, well, it starts getting dark early. <laughs> I didn't have idea what time it was. Everything was so mixed up. I, I sort of don't know where I am or what it's all about. Getting back from the church and then all these people and then changing all my clothes and everybody throwing things and all. Oh, goodness. I don't see how people do it every day. Do what? Well, get married. <laughs> when you think about it, all the people all over the world getting married just as if it was nothing. Chinese people and everyone, as if it wasn't anything. Well, let's not worry about people all over the world. Let's don't think about a lot of Chinese. We've got something to better to think about. I, I mean, uh, I mean, well, what do we care about them? Well, I know. I just sort of got to thinking about them and all over everywhere, just doing it all the time. And I mean, you know, getting married and it, it makes you feel sort of, sort of queer. It's, it's such a big thing to do. And, and you think of them, all of them, and, and they're just doing it like it wasn't anything. And, and how does anybody know what's going to happen next? Let them worry. We don't have to. We know darn well what's going to happen next. I, uh, I mean, uh, well, we know it's going to be great. Uh, well, we know we're going to be happy, don't we? Well, of course. Only you think about all the people and you have to sort of keep thinking. It makes you feel sort of funny. It's like an awfully lot of people. They, they get married and then it doesn't turn out so well. And I guess they all just, all of them, they must have thought it was going to be great. Oh, come on now. This is no way to start a honeymoon with all this thinking going on. Look at us, all married and everything done. I, I mean, the wedding all done and all. It was nice, wasn't it? Oh, did you really like my veil? 
You looked great, just great. Oh, I'm terribly glad. <sighs> Ellie and Louise looked just beautiful, didn't they? I am terribly glad that they did decide on pink. They just looked absolutely lovely. Listen, I want to tell you something. When I was standing up there in that old church waiting, you, waiting for you to come up, and I saw those two bridesmaids, I thought to myself, I thought, well, I never knew Louise could look like that. I thought she'd have knocked anybody's eyes out. Oh, really? Well, that's funny. A lot of people seem to think she looked sort of tired. A lot of people have been saying that about her lately. That, And I tell them, I said, it's awfully mean of you to go around saying that about her. It, she, she, they've got to remember that she's not as not so terribly young anymore. She can say she's 23 all she wants, but she's a great deal nearer 27. Well, she certainly was a knockout at the wedding. Boy. Well, I'm certainly glad you thought so. I'm glad somebody did. How do you think Ellie looked? Why, uh, I honestly didn't get a, get a look at her. Oh, really? Well, I certainly think that's too bad. I don't suppose I ought to say this about my own sister, but I never saw anybody look as beautiful as Ellie looked today. And always so, so sweet and unselfish too. And you didn't even notice her. Oh, but don't think I haven't noticed. You never pay any attention to Ellie anyway. It makes me feel just terrible. You don't like my own sister. I do so like her. I'm crazy for Ellie. I think she's a great kid. Well, don't think it makes any difference to Ellie whether you like her or not. She's got plenty of people that's crazy about her. Don't flatter yourself she cares. Only the thing is that it makes it awfully hard for me, you see. It makes it hard for me. I keep thinking when we get back to the apartment, it's going to be awfully hard for me that you're not going to want my family around. And it's it's just I don't know how you feel about them and everything, but 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 oh don't think I haven't seen it. Only if, if you don't want to see them, that's your loss, not theirs. Don't flatter yourself. Oh, now, come on. What's all this talk about not wanting your family around? Why, you know how I feel about your family. I think your old lady, uh, I think your mother's swell. And, and Ellie and your father, uh, what's all this talk? Well, I've seen it. Don't think that I haven't. Lots of people, they get married and they think it's going to be great. And then it all goes to pieces because people don't like other people's families. Don't tell me. I've seen it happen. Honey, what is all this? What are you getting all angry about? Hey, look, this is our honeymoon. What are you trying to start a fight for? Uh, I guess you're just feeling sort of nervous. Nervous? Me? Now, what have I got to be nervous about? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not nervous. <laughs> you know, lots of times they say that girls get kind of nervous and yippy on account of thinking about, uh, uh, I, I mean, I mean, well, it's like you said, things are also sort of mixed up in everything right now, but afterwards it'll be all right. I mean, I mean, well, look, honey, you don't look any too comfortable in that hat. Why don't you take your hat off and let's don't ever fight ever, will we? Uh, I'm sorry, I was cross. I guess I did feel a little bit funny, all mixed up. And then thinking about all those people all over everywhere and then, and then being sort of way off here all alone with you. Oh, it's so sort of different. It's sort of such a big thing. You can't blame a person for thinking, can you? Yes, let's don't fight ever, ever. We, wouldn't, we won't be like a whole lot of them. We won't fight or be nasty or anything, you will we? Bet your life we won't. I guess I will take this darned hat off. It kind of presses. Oh, oh, oh. Just put it up there on the on the rack, will you, dear? 
Do you like it, sweetheart? It looks good on you. Well, no, but do you really like it? Well, I'll tell you. I know this is the new style and everything like that, and it's probably great. I don't know anything about things like that. Only I kind of like the kind of hat that you had, you know, the blue one that you had before. Gee, I like that hat. Oh, really? Well, that's, that's nice. That's lovely. The first thing you say to me, as soon as you get me off on a train away from my family and everything is that you don't like my hat. The first thing you say to your wife is that you think she has terrible taste in hats. Oh, well, that's nice, isn't it? No, honey, I never said anything like that. I only said that, that. Listen, what you don't seem to realize is that that hat, it costs $22 and that horrible old blue thing you think you're so crazy about, well, that costs $3.95. I don't give a darn what they cost. I only said, I said I like that blue hat. I don't know anything about hats. I'll be crazy about this one as soon as I get used to it. Only it, it's kind of not like your other hats. I don't know about the new style. What do I know about women's hats? Well, it's too bad you didn't marry somebody that would get the kind of hats you'd like. Hats that cost $3.95. Why didn't you marry Louise? You always think she looks so beautiful. You'd love her taste in hats. Why didn't you marry oh, her? Oh, no, honey, for heaven's sakes. Well, why didn't you marry her? All you've ever done since we've got on this train is talk about her. Oh, here I've sat. And I've sat and just listened to you go on and on and on saying how beautiful and wonderful Louise is. Well, I suppose that's nice getting me off here all alone with you and then raving about Louise right in front of my face. Why didn't you ask her to marry you? I'm sure she would have jumped at the chance. There aren't so many people asking her to marry them. It's, it's too bad you didn't marry her. I'm sure you'd have been much happier. Listen, baby. While you're talking about things like that, why don't you marry, why didn't you marry Joe Brooks? I suppose he could have given you all the $22 hats you wanted, I suppose. Well, I'm not so sure. I'm not sorry I didn't. There. Huh. Joe Brooks wouldn't have waited until he got me all alone and then sneered at my taste in clothes. Joe Brooks wouldn't hurt my feelings. Joe Brooks has always been fond of you. Yeah, me. he's fond of you. He was so fond of you, he didn't even send a wedding present. That's how fond of you he was. I happen to know for a fact that Joe Brooks is away on business and he is going to buy me anything I want for the apartment when he gets back. Listen, I don't want anything he gives you in our apartment. Anything he gives you, I'll throw it right out the window. That's what I think of your friend Joe Brooks. And how do you know where he is and what he's gonna do anyway? Has he been writing to you? Well, I suppose my friends can correspond with me. I didn't hear there was any law against that. Well, I suppose they can't. And what do you think of that? I'm not going to have my wife getting a lot of letters from cheap traveling salesmen. Oh, Brooks is not a cheap traveling salesman. He makes a wonderful salary. Oh, yeah? Where did you hear that? He told me so himself. Oh, he told you so himself. I see. He told you so himself. You know what? You've got a lot of right talk about Joe Brooks, you and your friend Louise. All you ever talk about is Louise. Oh, for heaven's sakes. What do I care about Louise? I just thought she was a friend of yours, that's all. That's why I even noticed her. Well, you certainly took an awful lot of notice of her today. <sighs> On our wedding day, right at the altar, you said yourself that you were standing there in the church and you just kept thinking of her. Oh, right up at the altar, right in the presence of God. And all you thought about was Louise. Listen, honey, I never should have said that. How does anybody know what kind of crazy things come into their heads when they're standing there waiting to get married? I was just telling you that because it was so kind of crazy. I thought I would make you laugh. I know.
I've been all sorts of mixed up today too. I, I told you, everything is so strange and everything and me all the time thinking about all the people all over the world and now us here all alone and everything. I, I know you get all mixed up only. I did think when you kept talking about how beautiful Louise looked that you did it with malice and forethought. I never did anything with malice and forethought. I just told you that about Louise because I thought it would make you laugh. Well, it didn't. No, I know it didn't. It certainly did not. Ah, oh, baby, and we ought to be laughing too. Hell, honey lamb, this is our honeymoon. What's the matter? Oh, I don't know. I mean, we used to squabble a lot when we were going together and then engaged, but I thought everything would be different now that we're married. I Now I feel so sort of strange and everything. I, I feel so sort of alone well you see sweetheart we're not really married yet i mean i mean well things will be different afterwards um oh hell i mean we haven't been married very long no well we haven't got much longer to wait now i mean well we'll be in new york in about 20 minutes then we can have dinner and sort of feel like, sort of see what we feel like doing. Or, I mean, is there anything special you wanna to do tonight? What? What I mean to say is, would you like to go to a show or something? Oh, um, whatever you would like. I, I sort of didn't think people went to the theater on their wedding night. I, I mean, I mean, I, I, Oh, oh, I've got a couple of letters that I simply must write. I, I, oh, don't let me forget. Oh, you're going to write letters tonight? Oh, yes. The thing is, I've been just terrible. I, I have been perfectly terrible with all the excitement and everything. I never did send a thing to thank poor Mrs. Sprague for her berry spoon. Oh, and I didn't do a thing about the, the book bookends the McMaster sent. Oh, gosh, it's just too awful of me. I've got to write them this very night. And when you're finished writing your letters, maybe I could get you a magazine or, or a bag of peanuts. What? I, I mean, I wouldn't want you to get bored. Bored? <laughs> oh, how could I be bored with you, silly? Aren't we married? Bored. What I thought. I thought when we got in, we could go right up to the Biltmore and anyway, leave our bags and maybe have a little dinner in the room, kind of quiet, and whatever we wanted. I, I mean, I, I mean, well, let's go from the station. Oh, yes, let's. I'm so glad we're going to the Biltmore. I just love it. The twice we've stayed in New York, it's always been there. Papa and Mama and Ellie and I, oh, I just love it. It's, 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 I, I just, every time, I sleep so well there. Every time my head hits the pillow, I just go right off to sleep. Oh, you do? Oh, I mean, well, way up high, it's so quiet. We might go to some show or other tomorrow night instead of tonight. Don't you think that would be better? Yes, I think it might. Do you really have to write those letters tonight? Well, I don't suppose they'd get there any quicker than if I wrote them tomorrow. And we won't ever fight anymore, will we? Oh, no, no, not ever. I don't know what made me do like that. It got all so sort of, sort of funny, just like a nightmare. The way it got to thinking of all these people getting married all the time and, and so many of them, everything spoils on account of fighting and everything. And oh, I got all mixed up thinking about them. Oh, but I don't wanna be like them, but we won't be, will we? Sure, we won't. We won't go all to pieces. We won't fight. It'll be all different now we're married. It'll be all lovely. Oh, reach me down my hat, will you, sweetheart? 
it's time I was putting it back on. Thank you. I'm sorry you don't like it. I do so like it. That's not what you said before. You said you thought it was perfectly terrible. I never said any such thing. You're crazy. Oh, oh, oh all right. I may be crazy, thank you very much. Uh, that's, that's what you said. Not that it matters, it's just a little thing, but it makes you feel sort of funny to think you've gone and married somebody who says you have perfectly terrible taste in hats and then goes and says you're crazy besides. Now listen here, nobody said any such thing. Why, I love that hat. The more I look at it, the better I like it. I think it's great. Well, that's not what you said before. Honey, stop it, will you? What do you wanna start all this for? I love the damn hat. I, I, I mean, I love your hat. I love anything you wear. What more do you want me to say? Well, I don't want you to say it like that. I said I think it's great. That's all I said. Do you really? Do you truly? Oh, I'm so glad. I'd hate you not to like my hat. It, it would be, I don't know, such sort of a bad start. Well, I'm crazy for it. Now that we've got that settled, for heaven's sakes. Ah, oh, baby, baby lamb, we're not gonna have any bad starts. Look at us. We're on our honeymoon. Pretty soon we'll be regular old married people. I mean, I mean, in a few minutes, we'll be getting into New York and then everything will be all right. I, I mean, well, look at us. Here we are married. Here we are. Yes, here we are, aren't we? Hello. <laughs> Let me bring back Nicole Wilcox and John Lamar. Here they are. Hello. Here we are. Here we are, aren't we? <laughs> And let me see, we have, ah, we have uh, Anna Maria Trusky saying, great job, Nicole and John. Thank you. Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. <laughs> and I am not seeing, not seeing other, other questions as such. We got any, lots of applause oh. though. <laughs> applause from Lucretia. Hi, Lucretia. That's Anne, Anne Flamang. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank. Well, here we are. And uh, <laughs> thanks to to everyone who came and participated in this experiment. And uh, uh, can I say? We'll see you next time. See you next time. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Good night, folks. Thanks for coming. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Glad you liked it.